Hi, my name is Cheryl O'Donnell. I'm with USDA APHIS PPQ in San Diego, California. I'm an area identifier there. My discipline is in entomology, and I'm a specialist in Thysanoptera systematics and taxonomy. We're going to use the key for this training session, uh, NPDN training video Thysanoptera key. We're going to start out with couplet number one. Uh, this couplet we will ask about the abdominal segment number 10. Uh, the specimens that I have provided for you, if you will put those in the microscope, we'll take a look at abdominal segment number 10. As you can see, this fits in with the terebranchia. It is cone-shaped and it has this saw-like ovipositor. So that's the second part of couplet number one. The four wings, if you will move your specimen down to find the wings. You will find that the wings have two veins and they have microtrichia CD on the wing itself. Both wing veins have CD on them and there is a bridge between the two veins. It is in here, it's a little difficult to see on this specimen. So this will take us to couplet number seven in this key. And our next couplet will ask you about antennal segments three and four. So move your specimen down to the antenna segments three and four. And we count from the base. So we have antennal segment one, two, three, and four. This couplet asks for the type of sensoria. In the first part of the couplet, it asks for simple or forked sensory cones. We do not have that here on this specimen. So we go to the second part of this couplet which asks for non-emergent transverse or longitudinal sensorial structures. Now you can focus in, up or down, and should be able to see those structures on, on, these, on this specimen. You may have to change your uh, power on your lenses. Now on this particular specimen, it's kind of granulated. The, the sensoria are actually sort of beaded or thread-like along the segment and in some cases it may be on the side of the segment away from you so you cannot see it in the in the scope itself. Let's see if I can find at least one or two granulated sections. These have longitudinal sensoria, and you can see a little bit right here. I'll pull it up. It's very, very slight. It's on an angle, so it's a little more difficult to see. I'll look for another specimen here. You can see there's longitudinal granular-like structures on this. Two segments right here. So these are linear or longitudinal sensoria. So that will take us to couplet number eight on the key. On the, on the couplet number eight, you have the choice of transverse or longitudinal. We've already decided we have longitudinal sensoria on these segments. So we have keyed to aleothropidae. That will take us to our next key, which I have printed out for you. This is from Thrips of Central and South of America by Mound and Murillo from 1996. The key starts out with couplet number one for the family Aleothripidae. And we will use the same specimen to key out using this key. So couplet number one requests for antennal segments three and four for longitudinal and slender <coughs> segments. 
segment three at least 10 times as long as it is wide. And in this case, we happen to fall within that. Segment number three shown here is roughly 10 times long as it is wide. That takes us to the genus Franklinothrips. Now if you'll pull up your next specimen, we're going to use the same key for the Aleothripidae from Mound and Marullo. And you can see on these segments three and four you have longitudinal sensoria. Sometimes they curve at the anterior end. I'll see if I can get one specimen right here. This is pretty decent. Unfortunately, it is on the back side, which is sometimes happens. But there is the sensoria right there. And this is also at an angle. So it may be linear here and then actually sort of curves along the lateral line of the an anterior of that segment. But that would be the, this, the longitudinal CD, I mean sensoria, longitudinal sensoria on segments three. On that segment uh, one, on the couplet number one, excuse me, the couplet number one on this key, it asks you again for the length of segment number three. And in this case, the length is not 10 times the width. The length is the second part of that couplet, which is antennal segment three, no more than five times as long. So you can see here, one, two, three is much shorter than the, the specimen we saw in the last uh, training session. Uh, you can also see the linear sensoria here and here on three and four. If we follow this couplet, it takes us to couplet number two, where we have a choice of whether segments three and four have only one sensoria or two. This one has one, which takes us to couplet number four. Couplet number four asks for pronotum with several pairs of post-marginal CD, two or more longer than the discal CD. So you can take your specimen and go to the pronotum. This specimen has very short CD on the pronotum. So you can see them right here. They're very short. Here here, here. There are no long CD along the back posterior and there are no CD on the front and anterior of the pronotum. That decision will take us to couplet number eight. We'll evaluate the antennal sensoria on segments three and four. Again, whether they are greatly elongated or simple and linear. We don't have convoluted. They were very simple and linear. I'll go back and show you that. So simple and linear. Simple and linear. That takes us to couplet number nine. And our choices here are abdominal stern sternite four and through six with post-marginal CD but no discal CD and maxillary palps each three segmented form four wing banded but with apex pale. So we have banded wings. That's one of the choices in our couplet. Maxillary palps Are three segmented. You can barely see them. It's somewhat difficult to see, but they are here. One, two, and three. 
and the sternites. We'll have marginal CD but no discal CD. And you can see that here. There are marginal CD but no discal CD. Marginal CD here, no, no discal CD. So this falls into the Aeolothrips, Aeolothrips genus.